Hey everyone, we're back again at the R Marcus Collectors Corner with our vintage watch collector, Gregory Selt. Greg, welcome back to the R Marcus. Always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much. We've seen a part of your collection, but uh, clearly we can't get enough of it. So I'm hoping you're going to show us five more pieces of your collection today. Yes, I picked uh, five watches today. And uh, the first one is a beautiful, uh, it's, a, it's a very unusual diver. It's called an Aqua Star, and it has a brand name called Benthos. Benthos is some kind of undersea coral or something like that. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but this was a watch that was designed strictly for divers. Mm -hmm. it's, a very, it's a very big watch, and it was marketed by all the dive watch companies like Scuba Pro and, and people like Cressy. They would have sold these in their catalogs or in their shops. And... The special thing about the Aquastar, first of all, Aquastar was particularly about diving watches. They were made in Geneva. It's a great company. And the designer of this particular watch designed the movement to have a stopwatch feature, which is when you press the button, the, the, sec the timing hand goes all the way around and then it counts down as time elapsed. So it's a great, feature for diving. If you actually do dive, that is a great feature. It's actually a great timer for anything. So when you press the button, you are actually turning on the timer for one hour elapsed time. Wow. So as the hand goes back, nobody's diving for, for that long. So you can see how long you've been just by looking at your watch. You don't have to set anything. You just look at that second hand. It was so popular, this one, that, that Omega bought, hired the designer to get the design. He hired the designer to get the design and Omega made a Benthos watch. So these are watches that, that I think are really great. They're not that hard to find. They're usually pretty used. So, you know, try to find one that functions. Uh, but if not, if it, just, if it looks rough, it's okay, but it should function and it'll be a great watch. The second watch, I can't remember which one I had in order, but in any case, I, I had this pole router, Universal Genève pole router. Of course, this we is, have to have a Universal Genève uh, in Greg's conversation. That's, well, we have two, actually, because I'm, 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 I'm obsessed. I can't help it. But this is, these are great, and these are very popular right now. These are not, I don't think they're considered, I don't think they're extraordinarily rare. But remember that these were designed by Gerald Genta. So they have these beautiful lugs that, um, that you see these, we call them liar lugs or uh, twisted lugs. And this one has a micro rotor movement, which was a universal Genève movement, it has a little teeny wheel inside. And actually Paddock copied it. And uh, there was a conflict between them and Paddock had to pay universal some money for this design. So it's a very, very cool uh, kind of feature. That may be apocryphal, who knows, but anyway, I like it. But these watches are fantastic and they come in so many different styles. And I also wanted to show you, this is a, an 18 karat gold dress watch, but it has the pole router ring around the dial. And it is what we call a disco volante, which means a flying saucer. It's actually the Italian word for flying saucer. So it has no lugs. It's just a beautiful manual wind universal Genève with the cross. And, you know, if you know what you're looking for, you can find these watches and, you know, you could do it. You know, you can collect them yourself. This watch here, I think most of your viewers will probably know what it is. It is an El Primero um, from the first years that they made these. This is called a Mark I, but this one in particular, which I love, this one has a lot of patina. And a, a collector wrote to me and he said, I just picked this watch up and I was going to restore it and, and sell it. And this, he said, I just know you like these watches in these original condition. I, I, I had to give it you a chance to get it and I'll sell it to you for what I bought it for, which was an amazing you know, gift for me. And I bought it. And when I got it, it's never really, as far as I know, been messed with. Um, it needed a service, obviously, but it runs fantastically. And for me, what's special about a watch like this is that it can serve as a reference for other people. When you see a watch and you think, is that the way 
Is that supposed to look like that? How is it supposed? How did it look when it was new? Well, if you find one with enough patina to know that it was never replaced or redone or anything like that, that can give you some clues on as to, you know, how it was supposed to look originally. The last watch is this Favre Luba. This is called a, I think it's called a Sea Chief. And it's got a great patina. It's got a great textured dial with a diamond that has sort of texture. And obviously it's got the liar lugs that we love. I don't know who d designed it or, or why it hasn't, but it looks fantastic. And you know, in India, Favralubas are very, very common. I wouldn't say common, I would say they they can be found, but usually very, very redone, very redone, very polished. But if you can find an original one, especially with some texture dial or something like that, these are fantastic Swiss watches. Highly recommend them. Yeah, Fabri Luba is a brand, I think, very, very famous in India from back in the day. But um, the way they're positioned in India right now is more a watch that my grandfather or great grandfather had from back in the day. So, yes, if you do find one from that era, I think that'll be fantastic. Yeah, well, I think we're going to we're going to talk about that in the future sometime as we talk about watches in India and Favre Luba, to, in my view, is one of the greatest companies, Swiss companies. It's one of the oldest and it's a great company. Finding one that hasn't been restored or redone is very, very difficult these days. So if you can find one, I highly recommend, you know, learning as much as you can and, and trying to pick some up. Greg, thank you once again. As always, uh, all your watches and information about the watches that you shared with us right now will be available to read on the hourmarkers.com. So guys, feel free uh, to head on over to the website and read more about Greg's watches. Greg, as always, it's a pleasure. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in our next episode. Thank you very much. I'll Thanks. look forward to it as well.